Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa. With me, Georgia Calvin-Smith, tonight there's been a spike in homophobic rhetoric online from Senegalese supporters of Paris Saint-Germain Senegalese footballer Idrissa Gay. He refused to play a match after being asked to wear kit in support of LGBT rights. Also, keeping language alive through song. One Senegalese musician's raising his voice to breathe fresh life into his native tongue of Menik. It's the vanishing language of the Bedic people, and he's spreading the word on his high-energy tour. And as the world's cinema industry concentrates on France for the Cannes Festival, the potential and sustainability of the African film industry also comes into focus. I speak to Nigerian film executive Adioma Ona, who's working with the French Ministry of Culture. But first, Senegalese police are investigating a suspected homophobic attack in Dakar after a video began circulating this week of a man being beaten up by a mob shouting anti-gay insults at him. The attack coincides with a rise in online LGBT hate speech from Senegal ever since Idrissa Gay, a Senegalese football player with Paris Saint-Germain, refused to play in a match last Saturday after all French league uh, teams were asked to wear rainbow jerseys in support of LGBT rights. Gay has been fiercely condemned in France, but on Wednesday, the hashtag we are all Idrissa was trending globally on Twitter. Our Sam Bradpiece tells us more. Reactions to Idrissa Gay's refusal to play in that match have been starkly divided. In France, you've had politicians, LGBT rights groups, even the National Football Federation coming out and condemning his actions. On the other hand, here in Senegal, it's a different story altogether. The president, Macky Sall, tweeted a message backing Gay, saying that he supported his stance in standing up for his religious convictions. More than 25,000 people have signed a petition, uh, also backing the midfielder who recently won the African Cup of Nations with the Senegalese national team. It said that the charges of homophobia and bigotry lodged against him in themselves represented a form of religious intolerance. So they're really pushing back on that. Homosexuality is illegal in Senegal and punishable by up to five years in prison. Recent protests even called for tougher punishments for this act, uh, this sexuality, which is still considered a crime. Now, this story remains a very clear illustration that the drive for LGBT rights currently is far from a universal one. Sam Brab, he's there for us. Now, a fugitive Rwandan genocide suspect's been confirmed dead. Feneid Munya Rugarama was one of the few remaining fugitives indicted by the International Criminal Tri Tribunal for Rwanda. A UN prosecutor said that he died of natural causes around February 2002 in the east of DR Congo, where he was buried. He'd been charged with genocide and crimes against humanity over the 1994 mass killings in Rwanda, in which Tutsis and moderate Hutus were slaughtered over 100 days. And in Nigeria, separatist leader Namdi Kanu's been denied bail. The leader of the banned Indigenous People of Biafra movement is standing trial on seven counts of terror charges and was arrested after years on the run, having skipped bail in 2017. IPOP, which authorities have listed as a terrorist group, is pushing for the secession of a part of southeast Nigeria in the hopes of creating a homeland for the Igbo people. Now, France currently holds the gaze of the world's film industry as the iconic Cannes Film Festival kicked off here this week. For the 75th edition, the UNESCO's ordered, uh, organised a roundtable to promote the potential of Africa's uh, film industry. The continent's cinema is diverse, talented and increasingly celebrated, with Nigeria already boasting a global cinematic footprint that's larger than most. It's the world's second biggest film industry. But if the industry is to be sustainable, the passion for making films has to be matched with a more holistic understanding of the logistics that make productions successful. Now, Idioma Una is a film and TV industry executive who's in France working with the French Culture Ministry to share her understanding of what it would take to level up the continent as an emerging market for film. She joins me now. Ijuma, thanks so much for coming to see us. Thank you so much, Ijuma. It's such a pleasure to be here tonight. <laughs> well, we're really looking, into, uh, looking forward to what you have to say. So, first of all, like, what needs to change about, let's say, specifically the Nigerian film industry? Because, uh, you know, it seems to be doing pretty well, but you think something's missing in terms of its sustainability. What is it? So I think, um, first of all, we need to have structures in place 
that will support the existing um, investments and efforts by individuals. So we need to have the kind of support, the kind of structure that we are seeing here in France, right? Supporting both production and distribution of movies. Right now, is actually almost non-existent. Mm -hmm. So um, we're looking forward to where we can actually run, have an industry where um, efforts are complemented, both on the government side and also, you know, by private people, individuals who are actually uh, doing a lot. If you come to Nigeria, like you rightly said now, in terms of volume, the, 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 the volume is there. A lot of people are into production, but it's all more like individual funds and efforts that we see going into this production. So you think there's a lack of coherence in, in the industry? Well, um, to a large extent, yes. And um, what, we've, what we've been trying to do is to help bring a balance between the business side of film, mm -hmm. right, and also the creative side. So there's, there's always been a lot of focus on the creative side, which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, um, people in the industry need to understand that film is a product. Mm -hmm. And if the knowledge, the right business knowledge is in place, then we can begin to see sustainable businesses birthed. I think this is very important. So we keep um, building capacity, and that is what we've done um, with the Nigerian International Film Summit, holding in Lagos and in, in America and also here in France, just to build the bridges, help people understand how uh, strong our local industry is, the opportunities and potentials that mm -hmm. exist. But, right. but let's say you've got, you know, a really enthusiastic, very creatively minded would-be filmmaker. How do you inject this, this knowledge about the, the more practical, logistical side of making a film to make it successful? How do you inject that into his, like, knowledge circle or his or her knowledge circle? So um, we try to bring, um, drive conversations at the summit and uh, bring people at a very high level, executives, to talk to them, to talk to the young ones, to the upcoming ones, right? Help them to have the right knowledge. If you're going into um, filmmaking, why, the question, why do you want to be a filmmaker needs to be answered. So there are very different reasons. I found out that there are so many reasons why people go into filmmaking. But if we as Africans are going to build an industry, because this is a critical aspect of the creative and cultural industries, and this is why I'm actually in France at the moment, um, courtesy of the uh, French Ministry of Culture, some of us have been selected to see how we can collaborate, how we can work together. And if France is paying attention to the cultural industries, I, I think it's also a challenge to the leaders in Africa mm -hmm. to also begin to pay attention to this industry. If France can bring professionals across 28 countries together to talk about the creative and cultural industries and potentials, then I think our leaders in Africa need to pay attention because I believe there's something that, you know, this country has seen and, and actually they have a proven record of um, investing in this industry and seeing it grow over time and seeing um, professionals in film begin to expand so i think it's something that we it is very a key learning for me you know to be part of the Sergio culture program uh, courtesy of the french ministry of culture and uh, i'm looking forward to a lot of collaborations from this um, from this program between us and um the, the french institutions that we have come to meet here Thank you so much, Ijeoma, uh, th for your insight into just some of the little holes, well, not little, the, the substantial holes that needs to be patched to make sure that the Nigerian and African film industry becomes more sustainable, marrying the creative side with more logistical understanding. Thanks very much for Thank coming you. in Thank to you. speak to us. Thank you. Um, now, finally, an estimated 2,500 languages around, around the world are at risk of extinction. Amongst them is Menik, spoken by the Bedic people of southeast Senegal. Our correspondents went to the village of Bandafasi to meet one musician who's trying to preserve his language through song. Take a look. Benny Fadi is a man on a mission. The 36-year-old musician is part of southeast Senegal's Bedic people and sings in a vanishing language 
could many... There are fewer than 4,000 Menik speakers left in the world, but the language is slowly dying out. It's a catastrophe to see a language disappear. It would be terrible to be a witness to that. No one speaks Menik outside of this community, and migration is eroding the language. This village elder works as a blacksmith making traditional Bedik tools. He told us that Beni Fadi's efforts to preserve the language through music are vital. I'm grateful to Benoit and encourage him with what he's doing. If the language survives, it's thanks to him. We are too old to do anything. It's up to the young to carry this on. Beni Fadi is already a star in Bandafasi, but has his eyes set on a greater stage. 700,000 kilometers away in the Senegalese capital, his first show is sold out. Hey, yo, Trump, Senegal, it's going to survive! He hopes that by narrating traditional Bedik tales over electro music, he can bring international visibility to his culture. Today I have hope that the language will not disappear. All these people are discovering Bedik for the first time. I have achieved my mission, so I can celebrate. Yeah. Benny Fadi hopes to release his debut album towards the end of June to coincide with a European tour with gigs in Berlin and Paris. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care. So